If the soul of a champion is made up of unequal parts of confidence, competitiveness, composure, and focus, Pretty Boy Floyd, the undefeated pound-for-pound boxing king, oozes complete confidence. But is it authentic or part of his mind game, befuddling opponents and misleading those searching for the soul inside? We seek to discover his soul. Once I enter the ring, there's no fighter that can match me mentally. My goal is to be the best ever, and I think I'm the best fighter ever. Floyd Mayweather promised he would humiliate Arturo Gatti before his fans. I beat everybody you put in front of me, and I'm going to continue to beat everybody you put in front of me. This sport is it's like no other sport. You, in, in the boxing, this is combat, this is war. Exhibiting the fruits of supreme confidence, Mayweather has dominated his divisions since beginning his pro career in 1996. Dedication, hard work. Dedication, hard work. Well, it's another athlete that can go a decade without an L, then talk to me. One of the things that he likes to do when he's training is talk about the opponent that's coming up. How many, how many losses does that guy have? I ain't no shit, L. Basically, he's psyching himself as he's training. He's thinking about this other guy and putting this other guy down his mind. There are some athletes that feel like their ability to think, maybe even psych out competitors, is a real advantage. I mean, you just think of Tiger Woods wearing red on Sundays. On May 22, 2004, Floyd Mayweather Jr. fought for the first time at the 140-pound weight class. His weapons in the ring that night? Superior speed and accuracy, and a daring verbal counterattack. He started boxing me and started talking to me, getting me out of my game, saying, Come on, fight me, fight me. Self confidence is an athlete's belief in their ability to execute in the present moment. He has that utmost confidence and belief in his ability. Now, the general public or fans see that as cocky. He sees it as confidence. It's not a crime to boast about your talent. All he boasts about is talent. So it's not a crime to boast about your talent, as long as you can prove him wrong. Everything I talked about, if you call it bragging or boasting, whatever you want to call it, I lived up to it. These boys come in the gym, they work out every day. Every day. You know, you start trash talking to them and, and uh, you know, just trying to put them down a little bit to make himself feel up here where he, where he thought he should be. And that would overcome maybe any fear that he had. The fear of failure, it has to be there for any top echelon athlete. And uh, if it is a fear, I would think it's the fear of losing the stature that he has. Any great basketball player that's out there right now had a lot of great, a lot of great nights. They had a, also had a lot of bad nights, but still, is known as a, as a great player. And this sport is different. You know, you lose, you lose your number one spot. The L stay with you the rest of your career. Fear. All at once, it is an athlete's paradox. Either the catalyst for success, or the tripwire for failure. Boxing, if you're losing, I might want to lose. Who want to lose? I mean, you lose, that means you like everybody else. The zero means a lot to any person in sports. Not just him. You know, nobody want to have a loss at nothing. My goal in life is, I know which I know is going to happen. I'm going to retire as the best fighter ever. His sole motivation is that he wants to retire undefeated. Being a multiple champion in five, six different weight classes and go down as, um, the best ever to do it. Are they like, oh, he won a bronze medal on Olympics. Oh, he won a silver. No. You lose gold, you, re you receive silver, and you receive bronze. I'm glad I got the bronze. Because a true champion can take a loss and bounce back. And I feel that was, a, that was, that was my loss. That was just a way God telling me I need to work harder. So when I got on that plane and left Atlanta, I left it right behind. Once I get in here, I go in the zone. And when I go in the zone, can't nobody stop me. I think uh, boxing is harder than any other sport. Once you get in there and it's just you and the other guy, it's tough. 
You take any any athlete from any other sport, and they won't last a round. One round. An athlete was wouldn't last one round. In the gladiator world of boxing, Mayweather embraces the inherent sacrifice. In 2002, a freak training accident just days before his lightweight title match against Jose Luis Castillo tested his competitiveness. I was close to the bag when I hit the bag. My arm, I was too close to a punch like this and my arm bent back like this, which, uh, you know, tore the, uh, the, the, the rotator cuff. My arm was killing me. It was hurting so bad. It was like one of the worst feelings I ever had. I didn't want to let nobody know. And, I'm, and I said, yo, I'm going to fight because this, this opportunity may never come again in life. Mayweather made a comment in the corner about his left shoulder. We'll see if it is something wrong with it. Confidence feeds trust. The more confident you are, the easier it is to trust your body and go out there and do what you've trained to do. Mayweather's leaping in with the strong left hook. He wanted to go out there and be able to still perform and show that he could beat this guy basically with one arm. The winner by unanimous decision, pretty boy, Floyd Mayweather. Losing? He wouldn't even go there. He doesn't even want to fathom that. He doesn't even want to put that thought or that word in his mind. Mayweather's exaggerated competitiveness and drive for an eternal legacy has flowered into a self-governing style and dictated a 24-hour on-call approach to training. Some days he'll come in the gym and he'll get, he'll get a little frustrated at Roger because Roger won't allow him to go, you know, the rounds that he wants to, to go. I've been around the great ones. I mean, I've seen the Sugar Ray Lynch train, the Larry Holmes, the Mike Tysons. I've never, never seen a fighter train like him. He a freak to train. He loves to train. If he's anywhere, if he's anywhere, it be a restaurant, it could be a nightclub, he'd get up, he'd get up and start running. Other fighters got a, they got a regimen. They got a schedule. And that's not me. I stay up late. I run with Timberlands on, jeans on, I mean, T-shirt, whatever I got on, I run. If I feel like running, I'm going to go out and run. You never know when Floyd is ready to work. I mean, you can leave the house and go to the party. After the party, he go in the trunk, flip on some shoes, and just start running. You be like, we just left the club. And you be like, go run. We just ate. Come on, man, we got to work. You know, he's calling me at 3 o'clock in the morning. Come on, Al, where you at? Come on, let's go. You know, you late. Let's go. I'll say to him, Floyd, we're going to run five miles. We get, we get to the five mile point. And he'll take off running. There's nothing I can do, you know, and he'll run an extra three miles. When he's training in the middle of the night, what are most other fighters doing? They're sleeping, you know, so that gives him that, that psychological edge. When he's working, most fighters are sleeping. I'm just blessed. I don't know why God chose me, but he chose me. I always ask myself, well, why you chose me? I'm happy it was me that was chosen. I don't believe in religion. Because a person is a Christian, a person is a Catholic, a person is a Muslim, a person is a Jew. I feel under God, I, we all are one. So I find myself praying all day. All day. I pray every day and all day. Don't nobody know it. That's one of my secrets, and I told you. <laughs> Gives him faith that someone's looking over him. And when he feels like someone's looking over him and taking care of him, that gives him that added little confidence. Filled with a spiritual sense of humility, Mayweather has faced, then thrived, in the vice of public attention. Composure is a byproduct of his complete preparation. I never let what's going on on the outside affect what's going on in the inside because I know this is my job and, and this paid the way for me. And the Gaddy crowd responds. When I went to Atlantic City and all the fans are in there rooting for Gotti, that means it's a great feeling. I feel good because I know once, once we get in that, uh, that square circle, I, what I really, really know in my heart. The fans cannot get in there and fight for a fighter. 
It's just me and him, one-on-one. Mayweather knocks him halfway across the ring with his own vicious left hook. As Mayweather enters the latter half of his career, he faces the age-old mental struggle, the need to be noticed and to establish a legacy, versus the dangers inherent in losing a fight and his identity. If he suffered a loss by some chance, it very well could uh, damage his psyche to some degree. But we'll have to wait and see that because it hasn't happened yet, and I don't see it happening in the immediate future. You don't necessarily have to beat, a, beat an opponent all the time with your fists as a boxer. You can beat him with your mind, or you can beat him with strategy, or you can beat him with maybe something you said going into the fight. Floyd Mayweather Jr. is a very cerebral fighter, so uh, psychology is part of his repertoire. He's the epitome of what being the soul of a champion is all about because his work ethic is unbelievable, his dedication, and his belief in himself. But I believe that when all is said and done, that when Floyd, along with Sheila Robinson, along as one of the greatest fighters ever, to put on a pair of gloves. And I think that would represent the soul of a champion. I'm 100% sure I'm the best fighter in the world. And I told you that, and I'm, and I'm for sure about that. And somebody else tell you different, they must not be in a fight game. Ha, ha, ha.